happening Chinese here, also known as China L. Colston, actress and independent filmmaker. How y'all doing today, tonight? So, mm, today was really lovely. I was lovely for you, whoever's watching. Um, lessons learned. So I had, some of you may know, some of you may not know, I had the, the honor of being asked to portray, embody the essence of Ida B. Wells in a play in December of 2021. Only four performances in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Um, I was asked by the playwright to inhabit her on stage again. I inhabited her on stage, her essence on stage in 2015. I believe it's the latter part of 2014. No, 2014 and 2015. In Harlem and in, uh, in Harlem and upstate New York, I believe. For sure in Harlem in 2015. Um, it went well. The performance went really, really well. I'm really proud of that, that performance in 2015. Um, so they filmed it, they recorded it rather. And honestly, I haven't, I didn't see the performance, the recorded performance, stage performance until December of last year. Um, yeah. Anyhow, I had, for that 2015 performance, I had an um, adequate rehearsal. I had an entire, excuse me, four weeks, I just had pizza. I had an entire four and a half weeks to prepare uh, for the, the, to inhabit the essence of Ida B. Wells on stage, that portion of her life that the, the playwright captured. And it captured like um, um, aspects of her, her life as a 16 year old and as a, an early 20s and like her like 68. So like 16, 20 something, early 30 something, and then 68, right? A nice variation of age. And I did it with the direction, the collaborative director, direction of Michael Green. And to see the collaborative effort of my interpretation of Michael Green's direction, in it was really well. I did a really great job. I'm really proud of that performance. However, fast forwarding to 2021, um, when Christine um, asked me, the playwright, to inhabit her in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, because of the pandemic situation, um, most of my rehearsing was um, over Zoom with um, one or two of, I mean, I had maybe three zoom rehearsals with one of the actors and some kind of yeah and i'm in the entire play maybe two scenes i'm not in maybe maybe um it's a one act play and uh, i realized that when christine asked me to be in this production of it in 2020 21 you, you, I need, I'll speak for China. I need a minimal of six, six, four to six weeks of in-person rehearsal to fully inhabit the story emotion in an emotionally honest way. And to, you know, on stage, you have to really fill out the stage, fill out the set, get comfortable with the set, get comfortable with the prop pieces. So it's very, it becomes natural part of your, your being, your behavior. And I didn't have that. And I literally had, I think, one full rehearsal beginning to end with kind of lights and audio and, and costume design. There was not adequate time. There was not adequate time spent for me to, to digest the character and to work with the other actors and to work with a with a playwright director, like you can't do that. You can't. I'm not going to crash. You can't do that. Optimally, I can't. I speak to China. I can, as an, as an actress, give my optimal best performance if I don't have four weeks of in person rehearsal 
with the other actors and at least minimally two weeks a beginning from beginning of the play to the end of the play of on stage rehearsal with the props and the costume changes and the light cues and the sound cues and, and, and figuring things out in my interpretation in my interaction with the other characters I need two weeks minimally on stage with the props and the and the and the set and sound right at least three days of tech which is lighting cues sound cues from beginning to the end and um, and I didn't have that and I knew I wouldn't have it but for some reason because I had done it in 2015 which was like six years prior to 2021 right if my math is right that's not adequate time just because and I got off book and I know for me getting off book is not acting that's not acting interpreting the text that's acting interacting with the other actors if they are actors that is acting um, listening and you know intently and, re and reacting in a way that is natural emotionally natural and gesturally natural so I did not have the adequate time to produce the best performance that China L. Colston can produce as an actress um, based on my body of work on stage and on camera so that was very disappointing and I have to take ownership because I'm I don't regret having in totality that experience of going to Rocky Mount Rocky Mount North Carolina and meeting new great new black people great people who came out the audience who came out opening night was the best of all of the four performances um and I had some really great honest moments um most of my moments of the opening night was really on point um but it's really important now I'm just speaking to anybody who's a fellow actor who is interested in getting into acting on stage I think honestly if you want to if you want to pursue acting as a profession part-time or full-time and if you take the artistry of acting seriously you need to it is advantageous for you to do theater of course do on-camera work if you choose to but theater will really ground you because once you're on stage and the curtain star opens or if there's no curtain you have to keep going so I had an experience with doing the Ida show whereby there was some talking happening at the top of the play my character I portray when I'm at the top of the play I play 60 something year old Ida B Wells and there was a speech that, I, that the character is giving and there was some distraction occurring throughout the speech and because I didn't have adequate you know in-person rehearsal time and run from beginning to, to, the, to the end my my mind said what is happening here I hear a lot of noise in the front row and noise for someone that was part of it it just what happened was once the as the story as the play unfolded my memory said I'm gonna shut it down my memory shut down I mean she the my memory held on for like strongly like 70% 65 percent um but my memory's like i don't know what to tell you i was grasping for lines i was reaching for lines i and i and it for someone who takes who respects the artistry of acting that was very disheartening for me to experience as an actor because I don't like to be a fucking distraction to the story because as an actress I'm communicating the story to the, the the emotions and the thoughts to the audience right and I think this is a very important story Ida B Wells legacy is wonderfully inspiring wonderfully impactful and so to be an instrument of telling this aspect of her story these aspects of her story was really important to me but uh, if I'm forgetting my and I forget I forgot some of my lines so 
which means I couldn't really be present and be emotionally truthful fully because I'm reaching for lines, trying to memorize my lines, right? And that was so, man, I have never experienced, I, I mean, I flub lines on stage, but you just keep it moving. But I've never had it where I am the lead and I forgot so many of my lines or was saying lines that should have been after. And it was, it was just, it was something. Um, yeah, I was so hurt that I couldn't deliver my best because of the distraction that occurred at the top. And I guess that distraction, my mind was like, what's going on here? Cause I was like, cause you're taught to keep going on stage when something is, is an audible distraction, a sound distraction or whatever, keep going, right? And I did keep going, but sometimes my brain was like, I don't, it was it's cause your brain's computer was like, well, what's, what's going on here? What was, what's, what's happening? And my brain was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna give you a little here and there, but so it was, it was, it was not, it was not good. It was like, not, it was like so disappointing. Oh my Lord. That was like the Saturday, two Saturday shows and Friday, Saturday, Friday, two Saturday shows and a Sunday. Sunday, I record, I recovered, my memories more, was more up to par. So I, I remembered like, 95% of it and then Saturday it was like um, it was just it was people still happen to, un, thankfully people were still able to to get something from the story but I like to produce the best work that I can when I have all the things in place I still don't regret doing the piece because I grew as an actress because I was challenged with the emotionality of the piece. But uh, moving forward, I have to have minimally four to six weeks of in-person rehearsals with the other castmates and two weeks of on stage performances from beginning to end of play rehearsals before I present it to it, before I am a part of presenting it to an audience. So I would suggest any of you who are interested in acting and especially especially on stage to do the same. Um, shout out to my castmates who when I did drop the ball on the lines, they just kept it moving. And most many of them were inexperienced actors for stage, um, but they kept it going. So respect to them. Um, and it's so weird because I was completely off book, meaning I had everything memorized. I promise you, I like, I wrote it out a million times. I literally wrote out the entire play a mil like so many times here in New York. And I was like, yeah, I got it. I'm, it's memorized. I have, and I came up with great like emotional and gestural discoveries. Um, I was influenced by Lawrence Fishburne's um, one man act of when he played um, Thurgood Marshall, I believe. I saw a video um, archival clip of him on YouTube doing like an excerpt from it. And I remember he was so enthusiastic about telling his story as Thurgood Marshall. And I was like, that component of my interpretation was missing when she was trying to, um, when she was recalling um, as the elder, as the older um, Ida B was, when she was recalling her younger days and how she made an impact on anti-lynching anti legislation. In my earlier rehearsals, I forgot to include like the enthusiasm and the joy of retelling those stories. And when I saw Lawrence Fishburne interpretation, like a clip, I was like, I was reminded to express joy when she retells the recount those stories and those achievements. So shout out to my favorite actor, Lawrence Fishburne, for his performance inspiring that and reminding me of that. So, um, yeah. And also... When I I chose, as some of you may have seen, I chose to do two scenes from the Ida B. Wells play written by Christine Melton. Um, written really well, written really well, in my opinion, the, the, the one act play. I'm very expressive, as some of you may know of, some of you have observed. I'm very expressive facially and, and gesturally with my hands. I got that from my father, at least the hand stuff. And um, and I'm very intense as a person and as an actress. So when I did the two scenes, uh, 
and up, up, uploaded the clips on my YouTube channel and on Instagram, I had, because it takes place in like the late 1890s, I had to be very reserved in the way in which, because they were a lot more reserved in the way in, the way in which they spoke and their hand gestures. Um, you know, they would cut you with their words, but it, they would, it wouldn't be so much intensity and I'm very intense. So it, it took a, a different kind of acting for when, if you watch any of the, the two clips I did of IW was with Susan B. Anthony and with this, with a gentleman who liked her, John, I'm very reserved and, you know, kind of like this. And even though my eyes were expressive and showing fury or frustration or joy or, or, or disbelief, I had to be, all this had to be very still, very, very still. Excuse my, my extra hair here. Um, so that's a different kind of acting. And I like it because it is a period piece. And I love the way um, they spoke back then. I love the way Ida spoke. Um, so it was, it, I had a great, great deal of fun recapturing those scenes, those two scenes. And uploading on YouTube and Instagram, like I like doing those two scenes. I, actually, those are two of my favorite scenes in the in in the one act play, and the play is titled Miss Idol B by Christine Melton, written really well. She's a great writer, uh, especially for a one act play. Um, it, it was just like it was a different type of acting challenge, but I I liked it. I liked it. So I know I appear a little stiff, but that's how they would have interacted at that time. And I'm generalizing, of course, there are always anomalies. But yeah, so I did like that part. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to share that, like, if you are interested in doing on stage work, you, if you can really try to do it, because the whole thing is, let me go back to with the, the whole, I had like three or four Zoom rehearsals with the, one of the castmates for Ida B. Wells for the play. That's not enough, folks. That's not enough. Zoom rehearsal is not is not good enough to to translate onto stage. You have to be, and he and I actually had two in person rehearsals to be fair, and then like four or three Zoom rehearsals. But you really need to be in rehearsal in person for minimum of four weeks because you make discoveries with one another on how to the the optimal way to interact to react. As, as, as castmates. And you can't do that through fucking Zoom. You can't. You can do a Zoom reading and, and kill it, but to f that won't translate on stage. Um, it just won't translate. It won't translate. So, yeah, I wanted to share that with fellow actors or those who are interested or who are curious about some components of the acting pr preparation process. I know sometimes we make um we make it look when we when we really prepare do our homework we make the shit look easy and that's why so many people who are not actors who's never who've never acted on stage ever and i'm not talking about high school i'm not talking about when you were six year old and you played a frog or a tree i'm saying like 17 and up actually being on stage getting paid to be on stage to like, and you drop your line, or your, your cast may drop your line, and you don't know what to do. Like, hardcore acting, man, that is, it's serious. It's serious. Like, I, I've, I've always think, I thank God every morning for my memory, but yo, when it comes to acting on stage, you thank God when you finish that play, when it, when the play com concludes, thank God that your memory actually was working for you. And also, I want to say also, some people who have never trained as an actor, who've never done theater or train or anything, taking a one-on-one -on -one class, some people think, oh, acting is so easy because we make it look easy on stage or on camera. We make it look easy, right? But when your ass has never been trained or done theater and you get on stage, because you think it's fun, it's cool, and you want to tell everybody, "Hey, I'm on, I'm acting." You, you, you learn something. You're like, "Oh," because when you start looking at people in the audience, 
you'll be looking like a deer in headlights. You'll be, you'll be like, because people can trip you up. You have family and friends come out and they and you see the look in their eyes while you're on stage. That can like mess up your memory. It can mess up your interpretation. The fact that I acted on stage with some individuals who had no experience with acting and I still pushed through, although I wasn't getting anything from them because they were ill prepared uh, for the role. They hadn't didn't have enough experience and they just didn't appreciate what it really takes to act on stage and to be honest on stage and what's really what really goes into it. And you feel like, oh I can act. Okay, get your ass on stage. Get your ass on stage. And and I'm not talking about make everybody laugh. No, I'm saying a character where you don't where you can't where it's not about where it's not about making somebody laugh. It's not about being loud and telling somebody off. It's not enough, none of that shit. What if you have to portray a character who is very reserved? But they have emotional levels in the, throughout the play. So acting is not just about making somebody laugh. Acting is also not just somebody who likes to who cries all the time. Just because you cry all the time, that does not make you a fucking great actor. That just means that you are always crying. That's what that means. It does not mean you are a great actor because you're always tapping into your crying. I have to stress that point. It's because you make your family members laugh or your co-workers laugh does not mean that you are a great actor or a good actor. If you want to take it seriously, get in some classes, get your ass on stage. You hone your craft as an actor doing theater. Now, again, like myself, I have been trained and I've done theater, but it all that means nothing if you don't have adequate rehearsal time because you can't deliver the best performance if you don't have adequate rehearsal time, period. Um, yeah. Also, I wanted to share that. Oh, I already shared a video earlier that I'm um, going to start studying Carl Franklin's wonderful directing style for film because he's one of my favorite directors but what i did was i was on a train i muted i was watching devil the devil wears a blue dress devil wears a blue dress directed by carl franklin and adapted by carl franklin from the novel um excellent film noir film i muted the, the audio so i could just only focus on his direction the framing, um, the movement of the camera, um, the actors, because the acting is the actor is collaborating with the director on the best, the best interpretation for that character, right? So if you mute the sound, you can uh, you can really focus on the directing, the director's style, and uh, so that's what I wanted to share. I I was really long winded, but I have I guess I have been. Uh, wanting to share that experience again i'm i'll never do that to myself ever again i will never take on a project if i don't have minimally four weeks of in-person rehearsal with the cast and two weeks of full rehearsal with the set and the props and the costume change for minimally two weeks on stage for me so i can deliver the best performance and not be a distraction to the wonderful story written by the playwright. Anyway, if you have anything you want to add as an actor, um, please do, or a viewer. All right, y'all, take care. Peace. Chinese. Have a good night.